Hello and welcome back to Ducascopy TV. The random walk hypothesis states that prices day to day have no pattern, that price movements of stocks and even currencies are random. Here to discuss this further is Dr. Frank Hollenbeck. Frank, thank you very much for coming in today. Now, the random walk hypothesis, obviously it's important that our traders know about this, but what is it exactly? Can you explain a bit further? Well, about a year ago, I did a, an interview on the efficient market hypothesis, and it basically states that prices reflect all publicly available information, not only past information, but also anticipations of what prices will be in the future. So in other words, when we look at a current price, we can't make abnormal profit from knowing public information, in the sense that when you look at the current price, the only thing that's going to move the price are unanticipated events. In other words, if we look at the current price, we're just as likely to be up as we are likely to be down. Okay, So that has two important implications. The first one is that the best forecast of the future is the current price. In other words, if only unanticipated events can move the price, the best forecast is what it is today. The second implication is that um, prices follow what is called a random walk. In other words, that uh, what's happened to uh, prices in the past are reflected in current prices and therefore have no influence on what prices will be in the future. In the sense that uh, prices day-to-day uh, -day basically do not reflect any pattern, that uh, stock movements are random. Now, the concept of the uh, random walk hypothesis was developed in 1905 by a statistician known as Carl Pearson and he used a very simple example he said suppose that you have a drunk that's a lamppost and every step he takes is random okay what would be your prediction of where he, he will be in five minutes the answer is your prediction should be at the lamppost then what is your prediction of where he will be in an hour well the prediction is still at the lamppost except the variance is going to be much larger and it's Einstein and uh, Wiener uh, some physicists who basically used some of Carl Pearson's work to develop the movement of particles in a vacuum of course, this was also uh, ultimately applied in finance, and a lot of people uh, looked at stock prices and said, wow, they kind of move like a random walk. And there's been a lot of tests of the random walk hypothesis. For example, if we look at this graph of Philip Electronics, on the vertical axis, we have uh, the current price, and on the horizontal axis, we have uh, what will happen tomorrow, okay? And as we can see from this graph, is basically saying is that if the price goes up today it's just as likely to go up or down tomorrow and these autocorrelation tests have been done for essentially all of the stock prices in the S&P 500 whether that's BP or Sony or Microsoft. Now these uh, autocorrelation tests have been done on one day, four days, nine days, 16 days, and each of these tests have basically supported the view of the random walk hypothesis. We've also had statistical what are called runs tests, and these look for patterns in uh, stock movements. And these run tests also basically support the random walk hypothesis. What implications does the random walk hypothesis have then in technical analysis? Well, technical analysis ha has been around for over 100 years, and the Bible of technical analysis is a 1948 book by Edward M. McGee, where they brought up the concept, for example, of head and shoulder formation. Now, the random walk hypothesis basically states that patterns don't mean anything, and that uh, reality is really randomness. And there were two important books, one by a Harvard professor uh, which, uh, whose name is Burton uh, Malkyle, which wrote A Random Walk Down Wall Street, and this was actually a bestseller. And we also have another book by Nassim Taleb that says uh, Fool by Randomness. And what they're basically saying is that when you look at patterns, you're just looking at optical illusions. For example, uh, take this game, this game where we basically uh, toss a coin, and we're going to get $3 if we get ahead, and we get 
250 if we get a tail. So we have what is called a positive drift. This is to mimic what happens to the stock market. We would expect a positive drift in the stock market. Now that what the important thing about this game is that they're all independent events. In other words, once you get ahead, the likelihood of getting a heads or a tail in the next flip is still 50%. Now the important thing though is 100.43 is above 100. So what this will do is that when you look at a graph of this game, okay, you'll see a lot of peaks and valleys, okay? But these peaks and valleys are just simply uh, randomness. Now, a lot of times a technical analysis would tell you that they don't just look at the past to make decisions because uh, there's a lot of evidence on uh, the random walk hypothesis. Technical analysis will they say that they look at intricate price patterns, they have sophisticated trading rules, and a lot of the trading rules depend on very subjective uh, decision making. And uh, what we can say from the literature is that there's been a test a lot of the simple trading rules. In other words, there have been a lot of tests of uh, filter rules, uh, the simplest trading rules based on widely traded stocks. And essentially the literature says that um, you're better off uh, simply following a buy and hold strategy than trying to beat the market by looking at graphs and following simple trading rules. So we basically have two camps. We have uh, the camp of a lot of them are finance professors and professionals who basically say that uh, when you're looking at graphs you're chasing ghosts. We have the other camp which are the technical analysts who say that well you can develop um, sophisticated trading rules where subjective analysis is important. Uh, the only thing I have to say to your viewers is that if they really do believe in technical analysis then they should probably follow um, a complex trading rule with a lot of subjective analysis analysis because what we've shown is simple trading rules simply are not very effective. And that's why I have a problem when I see these uh, internet sites telling you that if you follow the simple trading rule you be going, you're going to become a millionaire. That's what I call a fool's paradise in the sense that uh, it's simply you, the only thing that's going to happen is that you're going to lose your money. Frank, thank you very much. Always great to get your comments. Frank will be back with us next week tackling another economic topic, but for now, goodbye.